Hi, welcome to Your Future, Your Finances. I'm your host, Brian Kuhn. We're talking about investment management today. Our guest is Michael Pichotti of Integrated Capital Management, or ICM. Welcome to the show. Great to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about your firm and your background. Sure. Uh, ICM is a seven-year-old firm. Uh, we have a, about a billion dollars in assets under management. We were formed, as I uh, mentioned a moment ago, seven years ago, as uh, a lift out of the investment department of one of the nation's largest mutual insurance companies. But um, our history dates back probably 20 years prior to that to one of the nation's largest plan sponsors. So it kind of gives us um, a unique perspective, um, that being you know, re really the research intensive focus of a large plan sponsor environment, and then definitely. Definitely a Wall Street sort of a, a flavor to our firm, and you know what, what we found is that you know through these the two lenses um, that you know re really small investors tend to be overmatched by the Wall Street marketing machine, mm -hmm. but larger investors like you know the plan sponsor environment that's a you know key component of our culture. Uh, those investors, the Harvards and the Yales, tend to do quite well. So really at the cornerstone of our offers, we want to replicate that sort of experience, that large uh, investment department experience for you know, financial advisors and ultimately our clients. And for the uh, viewers here, explain the term plan sponsor, if you will. Sure. So a plan sponsor would be an organization that exists to buy for their own account, right? So this would be uh, a large endowment or a foundation or a defined benefit plan. Okay. Uh, and you work with financial advisors, so you help them create uh, platforms, if you will, for their clients. Sure. Yeah, there, there are uh, you know, d hundreds of uh, third-party money management firms out there, and I, I think the way that we look at ourselves and the way that we try to differentiate ourselves is that um, we like to say that we bring the advisor and the client about a thousand steps closer to the actual investment team than anybody, anybody else will. Okay. Okay. And there's a lot of... Uh, in the investment management industry, there's a lot of strategies or themes or ways that they, people explain how they're investing your money. You describe yourself as a more of a traditional investor. Right. What does that mean? Right. So I guess in this day and age, um, everybody kind of claims to have a better mousetrap, but very few firms actually ever do. So in, in, in that regard, you know, we take that as a compliment, being traditional investors. So, you know, what that means to us is that we view the capital markets through – you know, a singular lens, and that lens formulates everything that we do from an investment perspective. Um, and that, that viewpoint is from the perspective of valuations matter. Nothing matters more to delivering an investment result than, than valuations. Valuations, if you pay attention to them, can be your best friend. Uh, and if you ignore them, you know, like uh, many investors did in 1999 and in 2008, they can be your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2008, that's still, even though it's uh, eight years or so now, is uh, uh, recent in clients' memory. So what, what really happened as, as 2008 occurred in the markets? So uh, 2008, of course, was uh, you know, a terrifying environment for investors. But from you know, an academic perspective, it was, it was fascinating, as are most investment crisis situations. And what you'll find is that while all of them differ uh, at the surface level, uh, they all have, you know, a commonality behind them, and that's usually that something or several somethings got, got too expensive. So it's kind of like once you inject the ingredient of being too expensive, that's the powder keg. You're sitting on a power, powder keg, and there could literally be a dozen different things that, that ignite that, that powder keg. So in 2008, you know, we were uh, faced with an expensive housing market. We were exp uh, faced with an expensive equity market, and you just needed a catalyst, right, mm -hmm. once you had that ingredient of already being overvalued. Mm -hmm. So the markets went down, uh, came back over time, but uh, you referenced, we talked a little bit about you can go down 10% and then back up 10% and actually still be backwards so or below what you started with. So explain how that works. Yeah, sure. So, so that, that actually relates to something that, uh, that we refer to as our investment thesis, right? It's the beginning point for active management for us with our advisors and our, advisor, or our advisors' clients. Uh, and, you know, that investor investment thesis statement uh, is that investors tend to be too return focused and not risk focused enough until it's too late. And ultimately, that leads to really two bad, you know, uh, very damaging consequences. The first that, you know, we don't we don't need to get into it relates to the field of behavioral science, right, that's been covered at length. In essence, you know, bad investor behavior, chasing performance, doing things like that, uh, you know, typically doesn't end well for investors. Mm -hmm. But the other 
that's probably more damaging is this concept of uh, uncompensated risk, right? So, uh, and, and to explain that, we came up with you know pretty simple formula, and the formula is plus ten minus ten equals negative one, right? So you might think to yourself, well, here's a guy that does math for a living, right? And, and the, you know something wrong with it, wrong with his math. Well, there isn't, there isn't, there isn't. If you start with a dollar invested, and you gain ten percent the first year and lose ten percent the second year. Your average is zero, but you, wh how much money do you have left? You have 99 cents left on the dollar, right? Um, this applies to basically everything in investing, every stock that you select, every bond that you select, every mutual fund. And most importantly, uh, it applies when you design an asset allocation. You know, it's pretty common uh, for investors to include assets that add risk to their portfolio, small cap stocks, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're adding risk to your portfolio, but you're not getting a commensurate amount of return, then, then this applies and the concept's called variance strain. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of good stuff. We're gonna cover it again. Uh, uh, let's take a break, we'll be back. Uh, I'm talking with Michael Pichotti of Integrated Capital Management, and thanks for watching, we'll be right back.